What's up, everybody? It is Patrick and Tim here, back again for another episode of Mission Possible. And the last few times we have been together, we went over our values and, and how we, the, the foundation of what we do here in, at and, the our Martins, and our purpose. And our purpose, yeah. Right. The, the foundation of what we do here at the Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission and, you know, Christ centeredness and stewardship and. Um, I don't have them in front of me, so I just completely went out of my well, head. Well, how about now. we do this? I, well, let's just go over this real quick. The main purpose of the Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission, the main purpose is, and the reason the rescue mission is, exists, is to fulfill the Great Commission as outlined by Jesus Christ in Matthew 28, 19 through 20. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the earth. And uh, that's what we, that's the main purpose of the Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission. Then we went over the vision, then we went over our motto, and then we went over our five values that we teach here at the Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission. Today, we're going to talk about our programs, our ministry programs. Yes. And you can get one of these. You, it's online. Yes. Tell, mm -hmm. them, tell them where they can find it. Martinsburg online. Union Rescue Mission dot com. You can find um, all the we're going over today. You can find it in written form there if you prefer to read instead of well, listen to they, us. They would go to our web page. What would they click? The uh, programs. They click yep. programs yep. and they would find mm -hmm. it in there. Yep. Because that's one of the things you want to let them know. And or the brochures that we have, we give these out everywhere we go. Mm -hmm. Ministry. It says ministry brochure right there. And uh, we're going to go over that this morning. But before we do that, we want to talk a little bit just quickly. We are um, open during this coronavirus situation. We're open. Uh, we are in a situation where we have to be. We deal with the uh, uh, most, most vulnerable population uh, in, the, in uh, the homeless. We're not a physical hospital, but we're a spiritual hospital, and, and these folks have to have a place to go. So we're open 24-7, 365. We serve meals to everybody, including the community around us. Since a lot of things are shut down, um, you can let, if there's families that are in need of food, um, uh, they need a meal, we serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner 365, seven days a week. Tell them to come to the Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission. Do you want to share with them when we uh, serve our meals? Our yep. meals are served at... Our breakfast is our breakfast is done at between seven and seven thirty, and then our lunch is eleven thirty to noon. Dinner is four thirty to five. You can show up a half an hour before each of those meals to kind of get settled in and whatnot. And, and as Pastor Tim said, we accept everybody. We don't turn anyone away from a meal. So if you are, um, you know, in need, if your if your children are out and you're not sure, I don't I don't know what I'm going to do because we know this is going to be an extended period of time. That they are going to the schools are going to be shut down. We are serving everybody, everybody. so bring them on in. Bring them on in. <laughs> yep, and we serve them all. And, uh, and also, too, here at the Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission, uh, your donations are needed. Now that you're at home and you bought all the toilet paper in Walmart and Costco, and there's no toilet paper left, <laughs> please don't forget us here. Your contributions. If, if, well, first of all, let me back up. Your prayers are essential. Pray for us. Pray for a hedge around the Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission for safety, for protection of health, because we deal with a lot of folks that um, are vulnerable to all this situation. Pray for our staff safety and our staff's health. Yeah. Put us just just bathe us in daily prayer. Um, but we do need your financial um, donations and. Patrick, share with how they can do that. MartinsburgUnionRescueMission.com on the top of each page on the website. So no matter where you are on the site, you'll see a Donate Now button. You can hit that button, and then you have a choice of um, either a one-time donation or you can set up a recurring monthly donation in case so you don't forget which month you donate just go ahead and set it up and it will automatically come out. We we'll use PayPal for it, but it's through our website. And then also on there is our Amazon wish list that you can see what our ongoing needs are. And we have the big ongoing needs list yes. on the website as well. So you can see those as well. And again, we, we uh, are open. We, we, we can't close because we uh, putting these folks out on the street is not going to help the situation. For them to have nowhere to go and making things worse, we're open here 24-7, 365. Please consider how you can help us. Your prayers are desperately needed. We need them every day. And please consider a financial donation today. Um, we're going into the month of March. 
Um, we Our numbers are up more than ever. Please consider a financial donation. It is needed. And one of the big reasons why, um, you know, we, we really ask every time for financial giving is we don't get any government money. We no, are not no. a government agency in any way. We're not part of any government department or anything. We are a separate entity only supported by our mission partners, our church partners, and individuals who donate. So keep that in mind. It, it, it all stays right here in Berkeley County, in Martinsburg, doing the work that we do here. And we also have to spend extra. We have to spend extra on cleaning products and everything because mm -hmm. now we're in a complete wipe down situation. We're wiping everything down constantly because um, we have so many people come through our doors on a regular basis. So uh, your prayers, your donations, please go to our Facebook. They can follow us on our Facebook page. You can find the link to the Facebook page off of the website, and that is really where you can get most of the information updated. It yes. is through the Facebook page. Um, we also have an Instagram page, Instagram Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission, um, and you can find the information there. But Facebook is really where we concentrate most of our social media activity on is through that Facebook page. Right. So now we're going to switch here. We're going to mm -hmm. talk about our ministry programs here that we offer here at the Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission, ministry programs and one of the and I, I just love this opportunity to share with you and we have uh, a guest program and then we have four residential programs along with those residential programs we have our literacy lab Correct. which we'll talk about and mm -hmm. we also have our discipleship track mm -hmm. which we'll talk about but this morning we're going to cover here real quick uh, two we're going to cover our guest program and we're going to cover our residential rehabilitation program, which is called uh, the first one, which is called Spiritual Recovery Program. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start it off with our guest program, and Patrick's going to share a little bit about that. Yeah, our guest program, it's it's really the emergency program is, right. is the best way to put it. It's the short term for food, um, clothing, shelter. Yeah. Um, they can come in. Um, we have a, a check-in process, an intake form, so we can collect information. And the point of collecting the information isn't so we can have all this information on people. It's so so we can sit down with the individual and see how best we can help them. That's right. And, 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 and the information process is very important because mm -hmm. we need to know if they're a veteran. If, uh, we also need to know what kind of medications they take, right. uh, what kind of illnesses they may have, um, all the different things we need to ask because it's part of evaluation. The seven days that they stay here mm -hmm. gives us a chance to evaluate them and best meet their needs going forward. Absolutely. Because we might, uh, what they're coming in for, we might not be able to offer them what they need. Mm -hmm. And then that gives us the opportunity in seven days to refer them to another agency. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and he brings up seven days. They can stay seven straight days in this short-term guest program and at that point we say okay how are we going to be able to meet your needs if we have to extend it a little bit more that's we do that in certain cases it's a case-by-case -case basis as to how long they do it but as pastor tim said that seven day period is really an evaluation period it's an evaluation period of what do you need how can we go about finding those needs? And then it's also an evaluation period of if we do bump you up into one of the other programs, are you really going to fit? Right. That, that, that's, that's the other key. It gives us a chance to see, are you going to follow our rules and those kind of things? Or right. Because in the seven days, it says here, during this time, during the seven-day period, during this time, they must show signs that they are working towards taking steps to move forward in their life circumstances. We offer daily chapel services. They, they participate in daily, in daily work assignments. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things with the seven-day program that is a little different than the past is during the seven days, they can stay here all day. Absolutely. But it's not they stay here all day and do nothing and then just lay in the bed all day. Mm -hmm. That's not the way we operate the Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission. Again, going back to our mission purpose. Our mission purpose is to make disciples, mm -hmm. not lay around all day and do nothing and provide a place to stay. Our mission purpose is Matthew 28, 19 through 20. So with that in mind, for the person that is in the seven-day uh, guest program, they can stay all day. They don't have to take their stuff and walk out on the street. But for those that choose to take their stuff and walk out on the street all day, that's because they do not want to stay here and participate. Right. Because we ask them to participate. There's six workstations mm -hmm. we have. There's the sorting room. There's the thrift store. There's the front desk. There's the recycling center. There's the kitchen. And then there's is housekeeping. Mm -hmm. And um, 
we have to maintain that all day long as we just said about with the coronavirus there's a lot of people that we have here there's a lot of cleaning that takes place and um that happens all day long and they can stay participate in daily assignments around the mission they can attend required classes during that seven day we have recovery classes that are take place we have ru mm -hmm. uh, recovery university for those with addictions and other issues in their lives that's on thursday night and then we also have a recovery group that comes in from the but the county recovery resource center comes on tuesday at 1 30. Yep. they can be in that but they um they also can participate in the chapels that are chapel services that are offered in the afternoon at 12 15 and in the evening at 7 30. if they stay during that time they can also learn how the mission operates and works right now majority of the people majority of the men that come into the guest program stay but there is a percentage i would say 30 percent sometimes a little higher say no i'm not going to do this because i want to go out and drink all day or i want to go out and hang around with my friends and get high um at the end of seven days we test them right. you know if they stay seven days we test them we do a urinalysis test and a breathalyzer to uh see what program they're available to now Somebody says to me, well, what happens if they test positive for use of drugs or alcohol at the end of those seven days? Well, we don't kick them out. We don't throw them out in the streets, you know, because people will say, well, I can't stay at the mission because they're going to throw me out. Um, no. Then if they test positive for one of those tests, they can stay and we put them in a 30-day program. They still stay in the guest B dorms and they're required those 30 days to stay on campus to work in one of our mm -hmm. um, support uh, programs and uh, spiritual recovery programs. And then they're required to attend the classes and attend the recovery classes. Right. And then we refer them to places that they can get even further help and mm -hmm. further counseling, whether it's the VA or a hospital or uh, East Ridge or uh, Berkeley County Recovery Center right. for, for further. Um, uh, and if they need a 28 day um, detox, we refer them to Mountaineer. Yep. Uh, uh, detox recovery uh, center so that gives them an opportunity we don't throw them out in the door and say we'll come back when you're sober um, if they're struggling with an addiction we then have 30 days to reach them at the end of those 30 days we test them again and it gives the opportunity during that time that they're exposed to God's love God's word because God's word can heal and change people if they're willing to accept them as Lord and Savior. So it gives us that opportunity and also they work. It keeps them busy, keeps them off the street, keeps them hanging with the crowd that, that, they're, that they're getting in trouble with in the first place. That's important. A lot of people have this concept that we just throw people out in the street because we don't care. Right. Um, that's not true. And then it's, it's important in, in at, at the end of those 30 days, if they test negative, then we then put them in one of the programs. And uh, did I miss anything else about the seven days? No, I think that, I mean, that covers it. It's, it's very important, and, and you hit it, that we don't, to two things here, because one of the perceptions is 8 o'clock in the morning, everybody's got to leave. Yeah, we throw and, them out and, on the street. And, yeah. and that is not true in any way, shape, or form. They, nope. they choose to leave if they want yep. to. That's their choice to leave. Yep. And, and, and then the other perception is, well, if you fail, then you get put out. No, that, that once again, that's not the case. We, 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 we want to help every single person that walks through our doors. And, and what we do is we do it in a biblically-based approach. I talked, um, I had to cover chapel the past couple nights, and one of the things I talked about was your sphere of influence. Because yep. as Proverbs talks about, you know, do not walk down the path for sinners because they will leave. And, and I went over that passage and I said, uh, you know, if you're going through these struggles, look at who you're hanging out with. See it. Because cause that, that is where you're, you're, if you shift that to people who are doing our values, and I pointed to, the, 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 you know, yeah. doing these five things, you're going to find that your behavior is going to start to change when you start hanging out. And that's what we want. We want to raise those disciples here in-house right. that can go out and help people who are struggling because they're going to know where the addicts are. They're going to know who they oh, are. And they know where the and dealers they, are. Right. And, they know, and, and, and here's another thing, too. The folks that walk out, and we hear it every day, we hear it every day. They'll come in and they'll say, well, you know, I just got out of jail. Jail didn't require me to do anything. I got to sit around all day and do nothing. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, that's that's jail, but you're not in jail here. Right. And, and we're not forcing you to do anything, but 
This is the program that we offer because we're coming from a biblical perspective. Our purpose is not to house the homeless. Our purpose is not to give free housing. Our purpose is Matthew 28, 19 through 20. Go ye, go ye therefore and make disciples. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's why we emphasize what our purpose, what our vision, what our motto, and what our five values are before we got into the program. I spoke in the church the other day, uh, actually this past Sunday, I spoke in two churches, and I asked a question before I shared what we did here, I asked a question. How many of you can tell me what the purpose of the Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission is? And I had several people say to me, well, your job is to house the homeless. And when I said to them, no, that's not our purpose, you would think I said uh, you would think I cussed at them exactly because yes. their response was, "Are you kidding me? That's not your purpose." No, it's not our purpose. Mm -hmm. And you don't know how many days and how many times that is said. I've been I've been here since January seventeenth of last year, and you don't know how many times people will say to me, uh, and I go to other agencies and government agencies and all kinds of people, and people say to me, "Well, your job is to house the homeless and deal with the drunks and the drug addicts." I said, "No, that's not our purpose." And they'll look at me and go, well, when did that change? I said, it never changed. What? I said, since 1960, 1960, I was born in 61, so I didn't write the purpose. A lot of people say, well, that's changed since you've been here. No. <laughs> the purpose of the Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission has always been since 1960. I was born in October 6, 1961. It's on my birth certificate. I didn't change anything. 1960. The Martinsburg, the purpose of the Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission, stated in our Articles of Incorporation, is Matthew 28, 19 through 20. Yep. Now, it's my job as a superintendent to make clear what our mission is, what our vision is, what our motto is, hope lives here, what our five values are, and what our programs are. And that's why we're doing these series of interviews so you know. And... Yes, we use, we house the homeless. We feed 66,000 meals last year and counting. We clothe people. We have a thrift store. We have a recycling center. We uh, preach the gospel. We have chapel. We have a discipleship track. Now we have a literacy lab. All these are tools, tools, bridges to build relationships, to establish uh, uh, the right to minister to these folks, and also to establish what we're doing here, and that is to make disciples of Jesus Christ. The guest program, a lot of people will come in here and say, well, I came from such and such program, they didn't make me do anything. Okay, well, that's great, that's their program. Go back to them, because here, you're required to work. Mm -hmm. You're required to do this. We, we don't charge people. A lot of programs get people housing, and I said to this person the other day, they're part of an organization that gets the homeless housing. I said, okay, do you get them free housing or do they have to pay for their housing? And the person looked at me like I was stupid and said, well, they got to pay for their housing. Okay, how do they pay for it? Well, they have to pay cash. It comes out of either their Social Security check or their welfare check or whatever it is. I said, okay. I said, well, you're attacking the mission because we require people to work. Well, we don't take money from people to stay here. Part of staying here, part of our program, it's called our spiritual recovery program, is for that person to work. Because as a man, you want to put the confidence and dignity back into a man because the Bible says the man, the man was set out to toil the ground and work. And men find a lot of their dignity and respect in what they do in working. And when they sit around and do nothing, and they do nothing, or they feel like they can't be used for anything, they get themselves in trouble, or they hang with the wrong crowd, or the drugs, or the alcohol, or the isolation of the mind can make people think things that are not true. So they work. So it's the same thing as though we don't charge people to stay here, but yet people think that um, that's our mission. No, our mission is to make disciples. Our mission is to, is, to take, is to take men and turn them back into the community where they're productive and they're contributors to society. And we've already done that. A lot of them, and mm -hmm. we're going to talk about that here. Yep. 
We're going to talk about our spiritual recovery program. Go ahead and read that. All the men. But all the men in, in that enter the spiritual, the residential program at the mission are required to participate in the mission spiritual recovery program and this is a strict no tolerance for drugs and alcohol atmosphere is maintained we do random drug testing we don't just test once and then they never get tested again it is literally i'll walk in and pull the roster out and go okay yeah. you 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 and you today let's go yeah. type thing self-esteem is fostered through positive Work ethics. This is huge. We keep on talking about work. You have to Christ build it up. Servant yeah. leadership, transformation, mm -hmm. stewardship, right. excellence. Right. Those values. Mm -hmm. And then also social skills are developed through peer and community interaction. One of the big things we find here is guys like to be isolated. They like yes. to isolate themselves, and that is not good. Why? Because if you're isolating yourself, you're not actually being able to go out and disciple people, and that's, of course, well, not what only that, is. You know, what a man thinks he is, and if you mm -hmm. isolate yourself after a while, you have some stinking thinking going on, yep. and there's no accountability. You tend to do things that are not healthy. Uh, development of social acceptance is encouraged through community interaction, participation in church, social, and civic groups is strongly encouraged, and if needed, involvement in uh, addiction recovery programs or similar, similar groups is encouraged and facilitated. One of the things I want to really emphasize here is this development of social acceptance is through community, uh, developed through in community interaction and participation in the church, and that's huge because... We have some partner churches that actually come pick our guys up yep. um, and take them to church. And one of the things that we I, I strongly encourage people, our men, to do is find a local church to get involved with. Because, as Pastor Tim says so often, we are not a church. We're an extension of the church. Yeah. We, we, we reach out to those other local churches and get our men tapped into those local churches. And we have men that go to several different ones. It's not just everyone goes to one church. Yep. They're, they're spread out across multiple churches in the area. And it's so important that they get, get in the church because we all know if the church is done right... It's a church family. Well, not only and that's that, the big thing. Not only that, a lot of these men don't have family. Right. They, they burn bridges, mm -hmm. and their bridges are burnt, and they have no family. And for these men, the part of the spiritual recovery program is that they become social, and a lot of them lack social skills because mm -hmm. of the, the breakdown of the family. So the church, social groups, other groups become the family, mm -hmm. um, and that is needed. Then going to the recovery programs, RU, and uh, our recovery meeting, and eventually we're going to try to get into Celebrate Recovery. These, these, these meetings uh, are social gatherings of people of similar likes and uh, issues, and it builds a family. It builds a peer interaction. It builds positive, yes. positive and accountability. So these men can grow and rebuild their social skills and rebuild their families. It might not be their blood families, but they have a family. And that's key because a lot of these men don't have a social network. It's gone. Right. And, and we're trying to plug them back in in all these different ways. That's why we do what we do here. Um, these are our values. These are our principles. Um, this is what works. We've seen it work and it's very successful. Um, you know, for those that come in here with their own agenda, that's great. But how, how, how's that agenda working for them? Not good or mm -hmm. they wouldn't be here. So, uh, you know, that's why we always get the, the, the pushback. Well, you don't do this. No, we don't. Oh, you don't do that. No, we don't. Uh, why don't you do that? Because it doesn't work for us. It doesn't work according to our values, our principles, and our purpose. Mm -hmm. That's not what we're here to do. There's other programs out there that do what you're looking for. Go to those programs. We're not against them. But don't come in here and start telling us, you know, well, your purpose ain't, ain't good. Well, yeah, it is. It's biblical. And God's word is, is, is in the end, everything else is going to fade away but, but the word of God, period. We're going to stand on that, that, and we know it to work. We've seen it transform lives. And that's important, you know, what he's talking about here, the spiritual recovery program. You know, we involve the men in, in a discipleship track now. Yes. And uh, we're going to add that to this mm -hmm. thing here. The discipleship class, we had four classes last year. So far, we have had two classes this year, and two other classes will be starting up real soon. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, I think, a total of 21 or 24 men involved in the discipleship Somewhere track. Somewhere around there. Somewhere around yeah. there. Mm -hmm. I don't have the numbers in front of me. 
and they study the Word of God. And uh, one class is on Monday at three hours, and the other class is on Tuesday for two hours. Mm -hmm. And this gives the men an opportunity to ask questions and participate and ask those questions that you can't ask in a sermon situation. Because in a sermon situation, somebody's preaching towards you. We're in a class. They actually can, uh, they have homework, they have book assignments, they read, and then they study the Word of God and they get to ask questions. They have interaction with the teacher and it's helping a lot of our men grow. And, and the interaction part is, is huge there because yes. the interaction with the teacher and with each other, it's helping them being able to communicate and talk with each other, yeah. which is something that a lot of, when a lot of men walk through our door, they are in a shell. Yeah. And it's helping them come out of that shell and, and understand how to talk to people. So many people don't know how to talk to people. And not in it's, anger either. No. And, and, then, and, this, and then it goes back to our value number three, transformation. Mm -hmm. The discipleship track is part of our transformation. These men get to transform from thinking uh, or not thinking correctly into, into positive thinking, into positive reaction. Instead of um, reacting like most of our men are trained to do, they react. They then become responsive. When somebody says something ne negative to them, instead of reacting in a negative way back, they are responsive. They, their, their answer is a responsive answer, as the Bible says in Proverbs. You know, you don't answer an angry man with an angry answer. You answer him what? With uh, wisdom and kindness. And that takes the argument out. You know, when somebody says, I want to fight you, and you say, well, I don't want to fight you. Mm -hmm. I don't want to and, and walk away. That takes the air out of the room. Right. You know, it's hard to fight yourself and stand there and beat yourself up. Um, you know, and we're trying to teach these guys because for a lot of them, that's the situation they come out of. You know, uh, and that's the situation they've been in. And they don't know how to react other than in anger. Mm -hmm. And it's a process. It's, it's a transformation, as the Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. It's a, that's why we apply these principles to everything we do here at the Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission. Hey, we can't share everything here with you, but we want to share the highlights. We're going to... Uh, we're going to end up for yeah. today, and we'll continue this uh, on the next episode. We're going to talk some more about some of the other programs that we have here. But before it, that, we want to have people pray for us. and Pray, pray, pray. pray. Yeah, cause and give, give, give. We, we, we know that a lot of... Um, a lot of you all are kind of stuck at home now. It, Let's yeah. put it that way. So, it. so you can always, you know, pray and then, like, like he says, give. It, it, it's so important to continue those donations into us. Um, simply because of the fact that we've said we don't get any government money. What we do here is simply through the support of your churches and through individuals like yourselves watching this or listening to this right now. So you can go over to MartinsburgUnionRescueMission.com. All the information about what we do is on there. All the information about our recycling program is on there. Um, but this is a time. How can, they, how can they give online, though? They, uh, MartinsburgUnionRescueMission.com, and then you see the, the donate button is on the top of every single page. Page. There's a little donate button that's got a dollar sign right above it, or a, do a dollar bill right above it, so you'll you'll see well, it there. What so. we'd like to do is, before the end of this month, is get 10 new donors online donating $20 a month to us online, 10 new donors, and Patrick can track that, and we'll get back to you at the end of this month if we reach that goal of 20 new donors. We'd like to get 20 new donors online, and Patrick will no, get 10 that. new donors at $10, $20 a month. Yes. Ten new, yeah, I'm sorry. Numbers confused there. Ten yeah. new donors Ten, at twenty twenty dollars yeah. a month online giving. Yep. And Patrick will give you that information. Yeah, like I said, it's Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission dot com and then you just click on the donate now button and it, it'll walk you through the process right from there. Just and we have a twenty I think it's twenty or twenty five, I can't remember which one that's on there. Yeah. And that's built into it. Just click on that button. And it all goes right through there. We use PayPal to, to process all of them. So it's and it safe matters. and secure. That automatic yes. donor matters because we need those those amounts on a regular basis. That's what pays our bills here. Mm -hmm. That's what continues what we're doing here. Uh, our purpose is Matthew 28, 19 through 20. Again, housing, feeding, clothing, we're experts at. Those are tools we use, our discipleship track, along with our literacy lab. We'll talk a little bit more about and the other programs but folks, we're all about building the kingdom of God here at the Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission, working with partners like yourself, individuals, churches. We're not the church. We partner with the church. We're an extension of the church, and we partner with uh, companies, everything. 
Hey, praying for you, pray for us here with this virus going on. Pray for our safety as we continue 365, seven, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. See you soon. Bless y'all. See you soon.